Welcome to the Harper Tech Academy. Today in this mix, we're actually looking at the introduction to the HACCP food safety system. So we're actually going to have a look at the history and we're also going to look at the seven HACCP principles and why they're so important. So let's have a look at what we're going to do today. Well, first of all, we're going to have a look at the HACCP definition. We're then going to look at the history how it works and why it's so important to food safety. So what is HACCP you ask? Well I can tell you you'll know it very well by the end of the hospitality course. So HACCP stands for Hazard and Critical Control Points. It's a systematic approach to the identification, evaluation and the control of food safety hazards throughout the full food cycle and we'll look at that a little later. Um, you ask, what is hazard analysis? Well, it's the process of collecting and evaluating information on hazards associated during the food production cycle. So now that we have a definition of HACCP, let's have a look at the history. And I find this fascinating where this has come from. In the 50s and the 60s, NASA started to actually look at deep space exploration and you can imagine that food poisoning on a long trip was not going to be good for the health of the astronauts. So in 1959, the NASA space program um, brought in Pillsbury, which was a large food catering company in America, to look at ways they could produce different types of food. And we have some examples here of the astronaut space dinner. So from this collaboration, uh, with Pillsbury in 1971 the first three principles were actually brought in and you can see number one the number two which was very important the determination of critical control points and the third one of a way of actually monitoring those systems well a year later in 1972 they had a massive outbreak of botulism in canned foods in dried soups and that year, the American um, Food Organization actually promoted the regulation of canned foods. And that's when um, the inspectors started to be trained in HACCP to avoid and get rid of the outbreak of botulism. It was a big year in 1985. The HACCP food system was actually approved by the um, food regulation in America and around the world. Now, through 1988 to 1992, they actually refined the HACCP system, um, the principles for food 1989, uh, guidelines for the application of the HACCP system, and this is where it became more widespread across the world. And in 1992, it was ratified in the current um, system that we actually use. And looking at 26 years later, they are still using a very similar system. In 1995, there was the wide agreement that ensured food safety across a whole range of food processing plants for poultry, for vegetables, for dried food. And this is where it really became mainstream across the world. So let's look at the HACCP principles. And throughout each step, I'll actually talk about how it actually relates to the food production cycle. So number one, conduct a hazard analysis. In a kitchen, you would be actually looking at your cool rooms, you would be looking at your environmental hygiene, uh, looking at storage areas, preparation areas. Then number two, we actually determine critical control points. Now these are, could be temperature points uh, when delivery as to how cool the meat needs to be, the cool room, how long you would actually prepare food for and at what temperature, then when you're cooking at what temperature it should be above. The next one is actually establishing those critical limits. So let's say the cool room, we know that we want to keep it between one and five degrees. When we're preparing food, we don't want our food for to stay out for too long. Once you've established those critical limits, we're actually going to look at how we monitor those procedures. For example, the cool room, you would actually monitor it to make sure that it is between one and five degrees and actually document the temperature. 
The next step, number five, establish corrective action. If at that point there's found to be something wrong, like the temperature isn't right, you would actually get the fridge repaired or change the system so that it is safer. Number six is every month or so you actually have to verify that the whole system is working and we'll actually talk about that later. And the final one for HACCP is the uh, record keeping and documentation procedures which has to be tight. Remember it ties to the regulations and it's a way of actually ensuring that your food is safe for your customers. I hope at this point you're actually starting to understand how the legislation and environmental hygiene plays a big part in the food production cycle. So HACCP is a big step in actually ensuring safe food at every step. This was the introduction. I hope you enjoyed it and there will be further analysis of the HACCP system later in the course.